No. How about hear me now? Well, I always thought I could talk loud enough. Anybody could hear me after 30 something years teaching 7th and 8th graders. My gosh, you can sit down, shut up. And they would. After I got my paddle out, they would. All right. <clears throat> uh, we, I, I was absent. Uh, Tom took over for two weeks, and I taught last week about, <clears throat> or the week before last, and then snow got us last week. So just a little review in, uh, on chapter 8. The lamb breaks the seventh seal. Now, let me, uh, let's get here first. The sixth seal, and I only showed you, Three and a half years from here, that way, okay? Three and a half years this way. Now, this whole seven years is called the tribulation. But after the sixth seal is broke, you will see that referred to as the great tribulation. Because it gets worse. This is just, it's just tribulation. It's bad. But this is the worst it can get. And it gradually gets worse and worse. Okay. <clears throat> Not gradually gets. It just in stages gets. Bang, bang, bang. All right. Well, in this uh, uh, chapter 8, let me just read 1 through 5 real quick and review it, and then we'll try to get through this other. The seventh seal. When the Lamb broke the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about an, uh, half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God and the seven trumpets were given to them. All right, the half hour is John's time because there's no time in heaven. Okay, so John says, figures, that's about a half hour. So he's interjecting some stuff in there. All right, verse 3. Another angel came and stood at the altar holding a golden censer and much incense was given to him so that he might add it to the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar which was before the throne and the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints went up before God out of the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and threw it on the earth and there were followed, there followed fields of thunder and sounds and flashes of lightning and, earth, and an earthquake. The golden, the altar he's talking about is the altar of incense before the, the holy of holies in the earthly temple. <clears throat> but it's before the throne of God in the heavenly temple. And remember back in, uh, the fifth seal, back in chapter seven, verse nine, You'll say, when the Lamb broke the fifth seal, I saw underneath the altar, and this is the altar of incense it was, that the man with the golden censer, the angel with golden censer has. It says, I saw the souls of all those who had been slain because of the word of God and because of the, of the testimony which they had maintained. And they cried out with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, will you refrain from judging and avenging our blood on those who dwell on earth? And there was given to each one of them a white robe and they were told that they should rest for a little while longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who, <clears throat> who were to be killed, who were to be killed, even as they had been, would be completed also. Well, all right. The altar of incense was a representation on in on the earthly temple for the Jews when the incense went up before the Holy of Holies between the curtain and over the curtain 
that was assembled at the pray, the people that were praying outside of the temple. The priest would come in, put the incense on, that was assembled. Oh, what you heard, Lord, it's going up to you. Those prayers are going up to you. All right. So now you see what's happened. The angel in the heaven. The Lord said, y'all just wait a while. That's southern for whatever it said there. Y'all, you pick it up, get the, the coals off of it, and instead of doing whatever they did on earth, he throws it on earth. And that is the signal. That peals of thunder and all. Their prayers are getting answered now. The prayers that were offered up at the, gold, at the golden altar or the altar of incense to, is going up, and God says, y'all, your wait's over. That's pretty much what's happened. Your wait's over. I'm bringing vengeance right now. <clears throat> so, with that, we're on the seventh trumpet, and we're going to... Let me get my act together. Boy, I'm way off here. Um... Uh, we're on verse 6. All right, Cody, you got it? All right, read with me. And the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound them. The first sounded and there was some. There came hail and fire mixed with blood and they were... And they were thrown to the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. Let's just stop right there. That's the first. This is these uh, description in verse eight on these first four are relatively simple and relatively <coughs> short. All right, but for that, you know, people's concern. If we look today at people's concern. They, what are they? The, the world we live in is concerned about global warming, climate change, famine, melting of the ice caps, raising of the sea level so much as it's going to flood New York City, flood Miami, flood all these great coastal cities in particularly the United States but all over the world, earthquakes and volcanoes, animal extinction. All you got to do is get on the weather application for uh, weather.com, and it's got these little snippets, you know, that you can watch and all of and it'll just show you on a small scale what's going to happen. A lot of these things. For instance, uh, the big underground, underwater volcano and right off Tonga. Have, you, have any of y'all seen the films of what, the beach, some of the beach at Tonga looked like before and after. They they had on the the inland side kind of had like a barrier island. They had the Pacific Ocean out here, and then they had <clears throat> I got the barrier island was here, and the, it wasn't three hundred. I don't imagine it's a football field across, and they had houses all along. This is the Pacific Ocean out here. And all those houses had before had them all in. And then after they were gone, tsunami wiped it all out. And no, nobody knows how bad it was because that one volcano underneath the ocean broke a cable that linked them with the outside world. They didn't know what was going on. Okay. When you... Uh, Look at things like that, and you see what our, the world, the G7 summit about economies, and we have the Paris Accord, where the, they all come in and going to talk about uh, how we can melt steel with windmills and solar power. No, ain't going to happen, but you know, that's what they say. They got all these world leaders to get to, sometimes I say pooling ignorance, because uh these things, they're worried about their ecology, the world we live in. It's going population explosion. This is why we need to abort all these babies to where we can live. It's going to be too many people here. 
They've got all excuses for doing things the devil wants them to do. And they'll make it, and they'll make a spin on it the way you think, well, I just got to listen to this. this. And the survivalists, they ain't looking for Jesus to come back. They're looking to be able to have a little instrument, you know, to get sun radiation to where they can charge your phones and boil some water and stuff like that. So if you're a survivalist, you know, you're not, you're just wanting to make it in this world that's falling apart. That man, you know, so man becomes an a idol worshiper, and his idol is Mother Nature. His idol is his world. His idol is everything he lives in. He has no hope for a, a future. He doesn't look for heaven. That's a pie in the sky by and by. I want it right now. Man failed his responsibility to take care of the earth, strip mining and little or no land reclamation, stupid government policies that make problems worse, such as California have all these wildfires. You know one of the reasons? The tree huggers. The nature worshiping people that lived in cities had no knowledge of what it's like for forestry management, would not pass laws and all, wouldn't let them cut the underbrush and remove the underbrush from dead trees. Thus, first bit of lightning strike them, particularly under these, uh, sometimes under these power lines where they let the underbrush grow. You got a wildfire. Or you got somebody coming out of one of the nice cities in the west coast and he's smoking a little weed, and he says, I think I'll see a start a fire. A lot of them were started by arsenic. And then, when the weather changed and the season changed, which in California's got a Mediterranean climate and all, and the season changed, and you've got the wet season, and it's burned off all the underbrush and everything, it holds the, water, holds the soil down, and the rains come, and then what you see? Every year, you see it. Houses sliding off, mud slides, sliding and carrying houses off. That is man's what we've messed up. Well, I say that to say this. <clears throat> Nothing has happened there and has happened in the world compared to what God's going to do here from here out. God's going to take care of the environment in a worse way than they, and it's judgment. It's not failed care for the environment. What man has done is nothing in compared to what God will do when he unleashes the trumpet and bold judgment. And finally, when Jesus comes back on earth and reigns from Jerusalem, 1,000 years we've got redeemed man in their glorified bodies and who made it and those that made it through the tribulation and had children and all, and they are in their natural bodies. Jesus has governed a world of peace for 1,000 years. And they're going to reclaim and make earth beautiful compared to what it is now. It's going to be destroyed. It's going to be much, much better. It won't be the Garden of Eden. It's going to be much better. But then God turned Satan loose for a season and he deceives those that they do not have that are not in their glorified body, they're natural men and they go follow Satan just like Adam and Eve and all of the lost and everybody did. And that tells us one thing and I'm getting ahead of myself and we'll talk about this. We've always said, you know, oh, if I'd have been there if I'd been in Adam's place, I wouldn't have done it. If I'd been in Eve's place, I wouldn't have took apple. I'm going to tell you, the liar of all lies would have deceived you just like he deceived Adam and Eve. And uh, so what happens at the end of a thousand years? God destroys everything. The earth, the moon, he, the universe. It all melts with a fervent heat, as Peter says. It is melting. He's going to... Recreate it. 
Perfect. New heaven and a new earth. And you say, all you with the scientific minds that got you degrees in science, like I got a minor degree, I ain't got a major. <laughs> but you're going to say, how does he do that? Well, God's not got a beginning. He's not got an end. He's been here forever and will be here forever. And you and you can't figure him out. If you think with this uh, Einstein mind or, or uh, Carl Sagan mind that you can figure out why it's just impossible. That's why I don't believe. That's why I'm an atheist. How could he do this? Well, he's got more brains. He created brains. So, to get it, he's going to blow, he is going to destroy it all and recreate it all. And it will be a it will be new to the angel's eyes. It'll be new to our eyes. And he's going to make all things new. He said that. Okay. With that, let's go on a little further. The seventh seal. When it was broken, there was silence in heaven. And that was because everybody was in awe of what was fixing to happen. What was about to happen was going to be something worse than anything they'd ever seen or ever thought about. And so they shut up. They couldn't say anything. They dumbfounded. All right. This first trumpet is a botanical judgment. <clears throat> it says that when this, when the hail and fire mix with blood, it doesn't, it doesn't tell where that hail and fire come from, what was the origin of it. And so the only thing I think you can do is assume that when that censer, that, that great angel threw the censer to the, to the earth and, and started answering the, the, God started answering the prayers. He created the earthquake, the earthquake and the volcanoes erupted all over the world. And in that, in that eruption, you had Lava, you had gas and ash cast into the atmosphere, and some of it staying so hot it fell on people, fell on the grass, fell on the trees, and it says that a third of the earth was burned up. A third of the trees, it says all of the green grass. Well, that's not a third, but think. In the wintertime, what happens to the grass? It dies back. If all of it burned up, what said what was green, and others, then some of it's going it's going to come back. So we all burned up a third of the earth, a third of the trees, and all the green grass. <coughs> so uh, in that, there's going to be uh, hail and fire mixed with mixed with blood. There's going to be. Uh, Thunderstorms is going to be peals of it says peals of light uh, thunder and lightning over in uh, verse five or four, and so some of this is is a result of what started when the censer was thrown down, and so the first trumpet is a uh, earthquake, trigger volcanic eruption, uh, building crops, animals, herbivores mainly. Well, are going to be without food if a third of the green grass is burned up and a third of the trees, what lives on the browse for the deer, so the deer season's going to be cut short because I ain't got nothing to eat, so you can't hunt deer. I'm just joking, but that's connect the dots. What's going to happen when a third of all of this is gone? A third of the crops burned up. Some people are going to die of starvation. A lot of people will. All right? <clears throat> From that, the second trumpet. The second trumpet says this, beginning with eight. Verse eight. The second angel sounded in something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. Verse nine also. And a third of the creatures which were in the sea and, and had life died. 
and a third of the ships were destroyed. Oh, this is kind of appropriate. About a week ago, somebody come in here. I don't know. It was maybe by a small group. We Thursday, somebody said, well, did y'all see the asteroid that just barely missed the Earth? And I said, I don't know about it. So I went to uh, Weather Channel, dot my weather app, and there it's talking about the Earth. Just missed the Earth, one million miles away. One million miles away, this big asteroid came by, and you know, said it wouldn't be back for 200 years. And uh, this is uh, the Great Mountain. This is one thing that I would think that the second trumpet is talking about a great mountain, a huge asteroid is going to hit Earth. It's going to hit either the Pacific or the Atlantic Ocean. Now you just go figure what that underground volcano did to Tonga. Go take your rock in a pond or a brick or something and you throw it out in the middle of the pond and you see the ripples go out. And you know uh, what happens when you have an underground volcano or earthquake or underwater. And you got the water here, and you got the the bottom here. What happens if it happened if it's an earthquake right here? As all the energy goes up and down, the shallower the water it gets, is the closer it gets to the ocean. The energy can't go down so it goes up. And that means that that's what your tsunami is, is all that energy is going up and not it can't go down because there's an ocean floor. And so that's what's going to destroy a third of the ships. Just think. Put it in the North Atlantic, right between New York and London. And if it's big enough, it'll be like a stone thrown in a pond and it's going to ripple out. It's going to destroy London. It's going to destroy the shipping, the harbors. It's going to blow some of those uh, container ships. You're going to roll them right inland and that's it. Uh, you, you think about that if it happened when they had all of those container ships off of Los Angeles. I didn't know if it had happened then. And then, okay, what happens to those container ships? There's food in there, maybe something else that's needed. And population is going to be without these things, whatever there. So that's the, <clears throat> the second trumpet. It's going to be a great mountain with burning with fire, probably a meteorite or asteroid. Uh, We've got even now government, <clears throat> I think I mentioned this two weeks ago, the government is doing a, a, a research, they send a satellite to one of these asteroids to, do, to see the viability if an asteroid was coming to threaten Earth, could they detonate a, a nuclear bomb on that asteroid and divert its path? from Earth. If they could detect the asteroid farther enough away and they just divert with a nuclear explosion on one side and to divert it off ever so how many miles they could, that at that point of explosion, they divert it so many miles, then it would be thousands and hundreds of thousands of miles away from them by the time it got there. That makes sense, don't it? Golfers, if you hook it a little bit, if it ain't but about that much off at 50 yards, it's going to be way off at 200 yards. So this is things that, that mankind, that worships mankind in ecology, they got to figure out how we're going to get by all this stuff that we know it could happen. It hadn't happened. It probably won't happen. But God... As a plan, I always had a plan. All right. Uh, with that, the third trumpet, verse uh, ten and eleven. The third angel sounded, 
and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on the, on the third of the rivers and on the springs of waters. The name of the star is called Wormwood, and a third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died from the waters because they, they were made bitter. Uh, a, a great star fell. The word there in the Bible which says star is asteroid, asteris, a, s, t, a, r, e, s. And that means any heavenly body, not the sun or the moon. That's what it means. So it's, it's not a star like the sun. It's a star like a comet or a, or an asteroid or something like that. That's, that's what it means. And so it's a, this then, <clears throat> it says it fell on all the fresh water. So you had your botanical judgment, you got your marine judgment, and now you've got your fresh water judgment. And so uh, this torch, it's like a torch, it was lampus. You get lamp from it. Probably a comet. It breaks up, so it does not remain intact. It breaks up into pieces, and these pieces, undoubtedly some chemicals or whatever's in the in this star that's going to hit the rivers. Oh, you figure a poisonous chunk of a meteor hits right above the bridge at Scottsboro. Everything. Downriver gets polluted. And God's in control, see. God's in control, and he knows what fresh water, what springs. All right, the one little chunk, just this, one little chunk, let's bring it home. So it hits the spring up here at Valley Head. It gives Valley Head all of its water in some of the mountains. But we've got to understand that that chunk it hit over there in the Tennessee River, wormwood, it poisons it. Oh, about 15 years after I moved to Fort Payne, they built a pipeline from section, I think, all the way to our, didn't they? Am I not right? I think it is. To our reservoir, so the water we get doesn't drain off these mountains. They come off the Tennessee River. And so we get poisonous water from the Tennessee River over to our reservoir. And then what happens to the water that's poison that we don't use? It goes down Wills Creek, goes into the Coosa River. And you see how a third, just connect the dots when you read this. If when that happens, don't just say, oh, what, what's going on, you know? Connect the dots. God's in control and he knows who, what fresh water is going to be destroyed. Now, with that, <clears throat> wormwood. Wormwood is a herb, a poisonous herb at that called ap absinthe. Come on, Barry. A absinthe. The wormwood. Wormwood is the major ingredient in the alcoholic beverage. It's supposed to be the most potent in the world. Absinthe. A B S I N T H E, I think. <laughs> I looked that up. It's wormwood bitter. It's a bitter herb. <clears throat> they mix it and some countries won't even allow it to be produced. It's so potent and poison. Fifty dollars a fifth is something what I I Googled it. Because I said, hey, I don't want to see you about this. Ninety-six percent alcohol. That that's not proof. Ninety-six percent. And it's weird. 
I, that's an attack. I'm going to get off on it. But that it's poison. And so what it, it, it just takes a, a little to poison. And how in the world would somebody ever... I, they said in originally they thought absent uh, uh, wormwood was a hallucinogen. So that, you know, you not only going to get drunk, but you're going to see things. And that was why it was popular. And that's why so many people died from taking because they didn't know in 96. Somebody take a shot of absinthe like they would a shot of something else and they'd kill them graveyard dead. They'd get alcohol poison at 96%. But now this, it said wormwood, we're talking about it's just a poison. Just think about it. It's poisonous. Whatever's in that uh, meteor or asteroid is uh, poison. And it'll poison a third of the of rivers, a third of the spring, and what uh, I think it said many will die. Waters were made bitter. Am I right? Okay. Yeah, it said many men will, from the water said, drink this water and they die. It's poison. It's in the old cowboy movies where they stranded out and they stagger upon the, the water, the well, and all the water. And it's got a big skull and crossbones stuff right there. It's poison. So, with that, we go to the fourth trumpet. And it's a meteorological judgment. The fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars were struck, so that, so that a third of them would be darkened, and the day would not shine for a, for a third of it, and the night in the same way. Uh, is that all of that? Okay. Think of this. The sun is the driver of our season and our weather. And what the the ecology worshipers do they got save the trees it's not put too much carbon dioxide in the air because it causes the sun's radiation is absorbed by carbon dioxide and creates heat we got global warming and that's why you don't burn coal you don't burn natural gas you got to go and do like the Californians do you got to get you some wind turbines that move and you got to drive electric cars and you got to do all of this stuff because the world is getting polluted. But it don't matter. If we do it in the United States, China is still burning wood and coal and there's a lot more of them than there are us. So fools always try to figure out a way to get around something. Instead of do what God says, take care of business like you should. Don't be greedy. Companies, power companies, do not pollute. Do it. That's the, and be good about it. Be righteous in your ruling over what God gave you on earth. But we don't. We do something else. We go a little bit goofy. I'm a... I guess I'm, my dad worked 40, 44 years for Alabama Power Company in a steam, a coal-fired steam generating plant. And they was all talking on Facebook about how terrible all this was. Well, they blew it up. They gorgeous steam plants no longer. One of the biggest electric generating plants for Alabama Power Company. But because it was coal-fired, they blew it up. 
and brought it to the ground. Well, what's going to be the result? When the driver of all this, this, what we're talking about, sun's radiation, the sun's radiation, if it changes any amount, what's going to happen to this? First thing's going to happen, a third, they say a third of the sun's radiation, how it happened, I don't know, an eclipse? Does the earth tilt in certain ways? Does the, is the Lord moving the earth closer to the sun or what? We don't know, but it's dimmed for a, set, for a season. Now, I wonder if it's like the astronomers say, it's where before a star starts to explode, it implodes. And it gets full, and the energy in and off breaks, and then it explodes. Because this doesn't stay this way. Later on in Revelation, it said the sun's going to burn with such a fire, it's going to burn men. It's going to burn them. It's going to get hotter. Remember, the Lord said he wasn't going to destroy the earth by water. But he says he's destroying. So when you see global warming, it ain't it ain't man caused. Some of these meteorologists are getting catching it because they say this is sunspot activity. Sunspot activity sends a burst of radiation toward Earth ever it cycles about every twenty something years. And they say this is sunspot activity. But who knows? Maybe that's what what's going to happen later on. But right now it dims, and you can think of it. If it dims by a third, July might become like January, and you it's going to cool rapidly. The Earth will cool rapidly, and you're going to have time. What you going to do? You going to burn? The solar power's out. And the winds in such a, will be created with such a force when you have such a drastic change from hot to cool or cold that you're going to have violent hurricanes, violent storms. You may have the whole weather pattern to be changed. Maybe California and all of their wind turbines, a hurricane comes through and they ain't, there goes the rotors all over the place and they're flying out. You can't imagine what will happen on that uh, fourth. When the fourth trumpet's blown, and we've got a... I want you to look. Let's look. The, the dimming is temporary, and later it'll increase solar radiation. But I want you to look to... Uh, let's look to... <clears throat> Look to 16, Revelation 16, 8 through 9, and that'll be about the increase in radiation. Revelation, the fourth thing, uh, oh, that's a bold judgment. The fourth angel poured out his bowl upon the sun, and it was given to scorch men with fire. Men were scorched with the fierce heat. And they blasphemed the name of God who has the power over these plagues. And they did not repent so as to give him glory. They're going to repent. That tells you something. It tells you, you don't come to Christ because when you decide, well, I'm going to come. You come to Christ when he calls you. When he calls you by his Holy Spirit's power, then's when you repent. If he don't call, you don't repent. That's just as plain as the Bible teaches it. Only read John six forty four. That's be enough right there. All right. Now let's look at this two other things. These are prophecies coming before John uh John prophesying about these four trumpets. Look to Isaiah thirteen, nine through ten. And let's look at these what this says. Isaiah thirteen 9 through 10. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, cruel with fury and burning anger, to make the land a desolation, and he will exterminate its sinners on it. For the stars of heaven and their constellations will not flash forth their light. The sun will be dark when it rises, and the moon will not shed its light. 
Uh, w, 13, 9 and 10 there. All right, Ezekiel 32, 7 and 8. There's other, Joel's got references, but we're not going in there. And when I extinguish you, I will cover the heavens and darken their stars. I will cover the sun like with a cloud, and the moon will not give its light. All the shining lights in the heavens I will darken over you and will set darkness on your land, declares the Lord God. So, when this happens, great weather changes are going to come. And all of these are indirectly judging the man, but they are on the ecology and the weather of the earth. These judgments are from God. They are recognized by these people. You know, they come out of their caves where they were said, called after the rocks to fall on them back in uh, the fifth, fifth seal, I believe. They, they went on in the caves and in the mountains and called God to fall on them. Who can stand before the Lamb? And they come out thinking gonna, things are going to be normal and these four trumpets hit him one after another and they still do not repent. We can fix this. They meet with all of the leaders in the world meet together probably and go to hate. Oh, this is how we're going to fix this. We'll, say, we'll fix this poison water this way. We'll do this and this. But they don't repent of the one they know is causing it. <laughs> I thought somebody was asking a question. All right. With that, I got two minutes. And uh, if you got any questions, remember I got the box over there, and uh, you put your questions in the box. And next week we will talk about uh, the fifth trumpet. And this next week, they are no. I want to finish with this. I I left out most things. During all this last thing of the meteorological uh, judgment, there's an eagle that flies through mid-heaven, and it means up high enough to where, and he shouts out with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to those that are on the earth. Let's read that, what he says. Verse 13, Then I looked and I heard an eagle flying in mid-heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, 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 to those who dwell on the earth, because the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. And that <clears throat> woe is a, a term that's used in the Bible to express judgment, destruction, and condemnation. And it's three woes. And what's happening, the next three trumpets are not going to be on incidentals that man has to live off of. It's going to be on man. The judgments are coming on humanity. It's coming on individual persons. It's coming in, uh, like we'll say, you've got those locusts that's going to come out of the pit, demonic, and they're going to attack men that don't have the, the seal of God on them. They've got the mark of the beast. They're going to have be attacked, and they will be stung, and they'll want to die, but can't die. Well, that's next week. So, with that, if you do have questions, put it in the box. And, uh, you know, if you got questions, the first thing to do is study to show yourself approved, a workman and not ashamed, rightly dividing a word of truth. Start there. Get godly books to read. Ask questions. And uh, be discerning about what you read. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for these good folks, Lord, that's willing to sit and listen to me, Lord. And I, I just pray, Father, that I, I not care. I do pray, Lord, if, if I can, if you can frighten someone now to wake up and come to you as you call him, Lord. Help them not to resist. Help them not to resist that call. Call them, Lord. 
for you love them greatly. Or you wouldn't have given us revelation, Lord. The revelation of Jesus Christ, you wouldn't have given us this. Except that you love us and you want to warn us. I ask these things in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen.